Welcome to 22 and 23. Today's topic is female puberty. Specifically puberty for those born with female anatomy. So first, let's talk timeline. The average age that someone with female anatomy can start puberty is anywhere from 8 to 12. The average age overall is around 9.5 to 10, but as early as 8 can be normal. Eek. Keep in mind also that puberty tends to be about 6 months earlier for those who are African American versus Caucasian. I know, that doesn't include a lot of people, but those are just some things that have been studied. I will keep you posted as we learn more about other backgrounds. So let's talk events. The first sign that puberty has started is going to be what we call breast bud development or breast development. And that's going to be a little bit of tissue developing underneath the nipple uh, and in the breast. And that is the first sign of puberty. Again, average age of that happening is around nine and a half to 10. Keep in mind that breast development continues for years. So it's not an overnight event. It usually lasts over the course of like four years. So don't think that one day you're gonna wake up with large breasts. It just doesn't happen that way. The next thing that usually happens is gonna be pubic hair. And that happens just a little bit later, like six months or so after the development of breast tissue. And like breast tissue, it slowly fills in over time. The next thing to come is the growth spurt. So the growth spurt usually happens about a year, year and a half into puberty before the period. So a lot of people think, oh, puberty is my period. It's really not. Puberty, the cascade of hormones, um, really starts a couple years before the first period. So we've got breast development, pubic hair, growth spurt. Also keep in mind that you continue to grow even when you're not having a growth spurt. So we all are growing after birth and then we have a spurt but you still continue to grow a little bit after the growth spurt too. But the growth spurt is the period of time where you have the highest change or velocity of growth. Then after the growth spurt, maybe about six months or so afterward, you might notice some vaginal discharge and that's gonna be just clear, snot-like stuff in your underpants. Super normal, a sign that some hormones are changing. And then around six months to a year later is going to be the period, the big event. The period can be abnormal in regularity, so irregular for the first couple of years of having it, but usually the first time you notice maybe a little bit of brown or pink or even bloody discharge, that's your first period. And the average age is around 12. So let's talk about some variations that you might see in breast development. First of all, uh, with the development of breast tissue, it's important to get to know the type of breast tissue you have. You might notice maybe some cysts or lumps or bumps as you grow, and they may change with your period too or your menstrual cycle. All of this would be normal, but just get to know your breast tissue, and if you have any concerns, talk to your doctor. As your breasts grow, it's also normal for one to be a little bit bigger than the other, and probably in post-puberty life too, it's normal for one to be a little bit bigger than the other. A lot of people also experience inverted nipples. So either one or both of the nipples are facing inward. Sometimes they pop out during puberty and sometimes they don't. And then another thing that you might notice about breasts is the areola, so the darker skin around the nipple. It is very common to have a little bit of hair on the areola. There are hair glands all over our body, including on the nipples. And there are also little glands called Montgomery glands that secrete a little bit of healthy oil. And you might see little glands on your areola too. Super normal. Now because this is breast or mammary tissue, it is common and okay if you happen to squeeze some of the tissue and a little bit of clear fluid comes out. No need to do that, but some people panic and that's what the glands and ducts are there for. So don't panic if that's you, but it would be normal, but you don't need to do that. All right, now skin and hair changes during puberty. I wanna specifically address a couple things. First of all, it is 
very normal for individuals with female anatomy to possibly get a little bit of facial hair. And this is a little bit more genetic. It's not like getting a beard or a full-on mustache, but some people might notice a little bit of darker hair on their face, and that's okay. It's usually genetic, but it's nothing concerning. It's not that you're going through male puberty. It's just a part of who you are, and it's okay. Other things that are super normal that people get really bummed and self-conscious about. Stretch marks. Stretch marks are a very common thing that signify that your body has grown and your skin has stretched. So that's okay. Uh, there are darker stretch marks like red and then there are also lighter stretch marks like white. And they're very common. Try to keep your skin moisturized, especially when you're going through your growth spurt, but there are just, sometimes the skin will stretch a little bit too much, um, too fast and cause these stretch marks. And it's just a sign that you've grown. So you might notice them on your hips. Uh, you might notice them on your breasts and that's normal. Another thing you might notice is cellulite. So that's just a little bit of fat that's in your subcutaneous tissue. It's very common in those with female anatomy, like 90% of us with female anatomy have cellulite somewhere on the body. It's not necessarily a sign of carrying extra weight or that anything that you did wrong. It's a part of having female anatomy and it's totally normal. The last thing I wanna talk about is a lot of people think okay, I'm going through puberty, do I need to go to the ob gyne? And that's the doctor who specializes in the female reproductive tract. Technically, you do not have to have a pap smear or see the gynecologist until you're 21. Certainly, if you want to visit one sooner, that's absolutely great and you can start establishing care sooner, but a lot of people are very nervous about that first pap smear and one, don't be nervous, but two, you really don't need one until you're 21. Now, on to your questions. Question one, I'm 14 and 4'6". I started to develop breasts at the age 11, but they haven't grown since. Will I eventually catch up or have I just stopped growing? My mom refuses to take me to the doctor, so this is my only way of talking to a medical professional. Well, unfortunately, I can't give 100%. I don't know exactly what's going on, but some people have variants of growth spurts and changes, and so, um, it doesn't really sound like you went through a growth spurt yet. Uh, I w if you can talk to a doctor, that would be great. There are certainly some things that can sort of interfere with or pause puberty, and I would want to get to the bottom of it, but, um, I wouldn't panic, but I really, it w would be recommended to go see a doctor. Um, another thing that you could ask your mom is, what was puberty like for her? And it's likely that you'll kind of follow her pattern too. So you can get in the specifics. If she doesn't want to take you to a doctor, say, hey mom, then when was your first period? When did you have your growth spurt? Blah, 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 blah. And maybe you'll get some answers that way too. Question number two. I am already 15 and breasts aren't growing. My period started when I was nine. <clears throat> this is tough. Um, so, it's unlikely, although not certain, that your breasts are probably done growing. Um, you said your breasts aren't growing, so you probably have some breast tissue there. And that's probably what it's gonna be. No way to know for sure, but if you're period started when you were nine. That's probably it. But you can always look at your family patterns and that's probably how your breast tissue will look. Breast size tends to be genetic. Question number three. Okay, so I'm a 17, almost 18 year old female and have very little breast development. However, I've been having a lot of discharge since I was 15 and still haven't had a period, what should I do? So first of all, you are a little late in puberty, but that's okay. Everyone's all over the map with puberty. Um, it sounds like because you're having some discharge, I would expect a period soon. I would also expect a little bit more breast development soon. 
That being said, never wrong to talk to a doctor, do some hormone testing, but I would expect that things are gonna happen here shortly for you. We usually say vaginal discharge happens around like six months to a year before the first period, but it can certainly last a little bit longer. And, and that's okay, it's a spectrum. Everyone's a little bit different. Chat with your parents or your mom about when she had her first period, and that's probably a good sign of when you're gonna have yours too. Question number four. If a girl started puberty at 17 and got her growth spurt at 18 and her period at 19, at what age will her voice change and what age will she stop growing? So it's true that um, those with female anatomy do experience a little bit of a, a voice drop. Um, and it's not as significant as those with male anatomy, but that is certainly a part of being a female or male. Everyone's voices drop a little bit going through puberty. Um, so to answer your question, it's tough to say on this timeline specifically when things are going to happen. Um, what I would say is that, sh so growth usually continues for another year or two after that growth spurt anyway. So um, that's what I would expect for that. And then for her voice change, probably, I would expect that similarly over the next year or two. Question five, how big does the vagina grow in puberty on average and what age does it stop? Does it stop after completing puberty or does it continue past that? So the vagina does not necessarily grow during puberty. I suspect what maybe you're asking is about the hymen, maybe, um, which really doesn't change all that much during puberty. Um, interesting question though. I mean, the vagina itself should not grow during puberty. Um, the vagina is just the, the space or the tube that connects the outside of the body to the cervix and the uterus, so the inside reproductive tract. So it's just kind of a canal. And the hymen is the tissue that surrounds the opening of the canal and sometimes you get little strands that can sort of block the, the tunnel, or it can be a little bit extra tissue. And that usually stretches or tears with the first time penetration, um, like with a penis or a dildo or a finger. Um, so to answer your question, the vagina doesn't really grow during puberty, but in the hymen really doesn't either but the vagina is where the period blood comes out of. So maybe that's your question. Question number six, what age do girls stop getting wet dreams and is it only in puberty? Or is it possible to get them after finishing puberty? It's possible to get them after finishing puberty. So like those with male anatomy, females can also experience orgasms in sleep. They don't produce the same amount of ejaculate that those with male anatomy have, but um, it's certainly possible and it can happen throughout your life. So not just puberty, same with males. Question number seven. I am 16 and I haven't started puberty yet. I'm completely flat with no pubic hair or period. My body looks different from other girls in that I have lots of muscle tone and not much body fat. I eat a lot and really healthy. I've always been self-conscious about being seen naked. I don't have a slit or outer labia. My clitoris and inner labia, which are tiny, are visible all the time. Thank you. This is interesting. And I included this because there are a variety of types of anatomy. So labia can be larger or smaller, um, but I find it interesting that you're you're describing um, a little bit of a different type of genitalia. Um, so in your particular case, I would recommend finding a doctor that you're comfortable with and showing that doctor. Um, 
no cause for panic or alarm, but there are certainly some anatomical variants that deserve further testing. So I would find a doctor you're comfortable with and share this with them. I know it might be difficult. And sometimes you don't necessarily, on that first visit, even need to show them things. I would just talk through things and say, these are my concerns. This is, read them the question. This is what it looks like. What thoughts do you have? And they can talk to you a little bit more about the process, um, what they're thinking, if they have any concerns. And then when you're comfortable, they'll, they'll want to do an exam. But thank you for writing in. And I really, um, you can use that question just to read it, read it to the doctor if you're nervous. But um, I think it's worth seeing the doctor. Question number eight. I'm a 14 year old girl and I can never tell what is normal and what isn't when it comes to discharge. I get a thick jelly consistency or watery. It's just thick, almost like icing or a little chunky and sometimes smells and I never know what smells are normal. Great question. So one, you described a few different types of discharge and that's probably because it depends on where you are in your menstrual cycle. So where you are in your cycle can change the type of vaginal discharge you're having. And so that's probably what you're experiencing and you already picked up on it, which is pretty cool. Vaginal odor or smell should really be like on the vinegar or acidic side. So the, the reason is because the vagina is an acidic environment and it protects the internal organs from bacteria or other organisms that want to get into the female reproductive tract through the vagina. So it's normal and good that it is an acidic environment, but that means it makes a, has a little bit of a smell that's vinegary or acidic, but super normal. And again, discharge can change wherever you are in your menstrual cycle. So cool that you picked up on that. Um, it can go anywhere from clear, snotty to really almost white, a little bit clumpy. It shouldn't be itchy. You shouldn't have any burning and there shouldn't be any pain. So if you're experiencing anything like that, or if the smell changes a lot, or if it's like fishy, then talk to your doctor. Question number nine, is it normal for vaginal discharge or the vagina in general to smell a tad bit metallic before a period? Or does that mean a period is coming soon? Interesting. So metallic to me makes me think iron and there is a lot of iron in our blood. And that would be my answer to you. Maybe your sense of smell is like really astute, in tune, sharp when it comes to your period. But interesting. Um, I don't know the answer medically, but blood does have iron in it and a little metallic, so makes sense. Question 10. A couple of days ago, I put in a tampon for the first time. It caused discomfort for me while it was in, but it was okay not long after it was taken out. I thought maybe put it, I thought I maybe put it in incorrectly. I thought I maybe put it in incorrectly, but the day after I tried putting a tampon in again and went through five or six tampons before I gave up. Some of them simply wouldn't go in and the ones that made it in just wouldn't sit comfortably. They were very uncomfortable and painful. I'm also feeling quite sensitive around the vulva, specifically the, the vaginal opening, the labia, and the bikini line. These might not be all connected, but I was wondering if you might know what's going wrong. Thanks. So first of all, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, anyone can use a tampon. So it doesn't mean you have to have had sex or anything. Anyone can use a tampon. That being said, it can be a bit of a scary concept when you first start doing it. And so it is possible for the vaginal walls to sort of tense up when you're inserting the tampon. And it's possible that there is some extra hymen tissue that's interfering with the tampon. Um, a variety of things can kind of happen, but what I would probably say for you is that it's possible that you're having just a little bit of tension in the area. And that is sort of supported by a lot of like your aches in that region in general. 
what I would probably recommend for you is getting some water-based lube. And you can put the water-based lube around the applicator of the tampon or you can put it around the vaginal opening and that should help the tampon go in a little bit easier and hopefully help you relax a little bit um, and make sure that tampon the applicator goes in all the way before you insert the tampon. Um, certainly getting it sort of in the wrong spot can be uncomfortable. If it's really dry or tight in there it can be uncomfortable. So um, my recommendation to you would be try to relax use a little water-based lube, see if that helps. That's my tip. All right, uh, thanks for all your questions. I hope this helped and we'll see you for the next video.